Okay, well now we're going to talk about some additional benefits of stacking, uh, something that we haven't talked about before. You may have heard of it. And these are the multiple uh, reflections that are sometimes seen in uh, seismic data, particularly in marine environments. Here we are. We've got a uh, marine setup here. We've got uh, our uh, cable strung out in the water. Uh, we've got source, receivers, and uh, we can see primary ref reflections. This would be a primary reflection off of the water bottom. This would be a primary reflection off of some subsurface geologic interface. And this can happen several times. Um, so what we can also get is a multiple bounce. So the acoustic wave goes down, hits the water bottom, is reflected back up to the surface, goes back down, is reflected back to the surface again. So we get a double bounce in this case. Now, this air water reflection coefficient is very high. It's close to minus one as we come from the water, should say water to air reflection coefficient is close to a minus one. So we get total internal reflection almost here of the uh, acoustic energy that is reflected back up to the surface. And of course that, that would depend on what the reflection coefficient of the water bottom is, of course. So it's worth noting, you know, if you calculate the reflection coefficient, that the velocity velocities will change as a function of salinity, as a function of temperature, and as a function of depth. Here we see uh, this is a, a plot at 20 degrees centigrade. And uh, you can see at the surface we have a acoustic uh, velocity in the water of about uh, 1,520 meters per second. At around 1,000 meters it drops to 1,480 and then rises back uh, up with, with depth. And we're probably interested in most marine cases in this interval here and you can see this low velocity uh, layer leads to a total internal reflection of um, the uh, acoustic waves in this interval. This is called the SOFAR channel. It's a sound fixing and ranging uh, channel and uh, whales actually use this uh, waveguide here in order to communicate uh, sounds over, over very large distances, as you, as you may have heard. The temperature here drops off from around 20 degrees to um, less than 5 degrees centigrade within 1,000 meters. And, and if we take a look at a situation where the surface water temperature, where we, we drop that off to 5 degrees, there really isn't much of a low velocity uh, channel here. It's a little bit of a break in the uh, slope, but no real drop away from the uh, 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 increasing trend in velocity with depth. Uh, the temperature drops from about 5 degrees to uh, 2 degrees, close to freezing, but not quite with, uh, with depth. So that relates to the reflection coefficients in a, in a, you know, a variety of different uh, global environments. Now here we're going to be taking a look at a normal incidence time section. Um, we were showing our data in a shot record uh, previously, but if we were to stack that, what we would see would be, here would be the two-way water bottom time. This would be the two-way, two times the two-way water bottom time. So this would be our water bottom, water bottom reflection. This would be a primary reflection from some geologic interval. And this would be a water bottom multiple. So now the giveaway is that this time that we have up here from the uh, datum down to the water bottom, we duplicate that and our water bottom reflection comes in at twice that time. So that's kind of a red flag for us. That's a giveaway that we might be looking at a water bottom multiple here. And not a primary reflection, but that's the that's the main question for us: is how do we determine uh, whether this is a primary, whether it's a multiple? And again, the multiple is just a uh, 
in this case for the water bottom, first water bottom multiple, it's a, uh, a double bounce of the acoustic energy emitted from the source in the water layer. This kind of goes back and forth and back and forth. So, so just, just to emphasize, uh, we've got this energy, the acoustic uh, disturbance goes down into the subsurface, keeps on going down below into the to the uh, deeper geologic intervals. We have a reflection from the water bottom. We have a double reflection from the water bottom. This is our multiple. The multiple shows up at twice the water bottom arrival time, and that's usually the, um, the giveaway there. So we see a second order multiple here. It comes in at about uh, twice the uh, datum to water bottom time. So the, we also have another class of multiples that we can call interbed multiples. This would be a subsurface geologic interval. Let's say it has, a, oh, it could be a gas sand, or it could be, um, you know, some other um, low velocity interval for some reason, or it could be a high velocity interval. Uh, but we have large reflection coefficients at the top and the bottom. So this would be the Acoustic disturbance comes down as reflected from a reflection point back up to receivers across the surface. This would be our primary. But we could also get a second bounce. So the acoustic um, uh, wavefront comes down, it bounces off the base of this layer, comes up, hits the top, is returned back down to the base, then comes back up to the geophone. So this would be your interbed multiple. So now let's take a look at the problem for the interpreter. So we've got things in two-way time here. We're looking at a stack seismic section in this case. So these would be our zero offset or our normal incidence uh, seismic trace representation. And we can see two primaries here, primary one, primary two. And um, now this layer, we have our primary coming up as a reflection from the base, but we know that we're going to get, we could get, depending on the value of the reflection coefficients here across the top and the bottom, we could get an additional reflection across the top, down to the bottom, and back up again to the surface. We could see that as a first order multiple, interbed multiple. Uh, this could happen again we could get a second order multiple. And this could happen a third time and we'd get a third order multiple. Now the main question that we have is when we look at our seismic data they're not colored. Uh, we don't know the multiples from the primaries. So everything comes in looks like this. Which are the multiples? Which are the primaries? Again for us, the giveaway is that we see kind of a repeat of the travel times, uh, in this case between the interbed, between this particular bed, the top and the bottom of this bed, this two-way travel time for the primaries, one and two, uh, is going to be equal to the two-way time between, in this case, the second and third order multiples. It should be equal to this uh, same delta, delta T. Okay, so how do, we, how do we minimize this problem for the interpreter in our stack seismic section? Well, if we come back and we look at the multiple ray path here, it spends all of its time traveling in this lower velocity water layer. And then we have our primaries, which are traveling in the higher velocity here. So this diagram here, which is not too good, but we can see the primary water bottom reflection coming in we see a higher velocity primary reflection coming in from uh, some deeper layer. And then we see the water bottom multiple. It has a velocity which is lower than this primary reflection here. And uh, it's basically traveling at the same velocity as, uh, as the primary and the water bottom. Uh, of course, we're, we're, we're going up and down twice, so it, it doesn't perfectly parallel the, the shallower reflector. So here's our CMP gather. Here's the primary water bottom reflection, the primary reflection, the water bottom multiple. I've just kind of dashed them in over here. When we apply the NMO correction, we flatten out the water bottom. 
we flatten out the primary. But since we're using velocities in our velocity analysis, we, we knew better. We knew that the velocity of these deeper reflections was not going to be the same as the water bottom, was not going to be the same as water. We're in hard rock or soft compacted sediments. And so the NMO correction here does not pull this, uh, this, this multiple event up, does not flatten it out. So when we stack, we sum the traces together across the gather. They're going to sum together in phase for the water bottom. They're going to sum together in phase for the uh, primary. But they're going to be out of phase. There's going to be some destructive interference here as these events sum across the gather. And so that's, that's another benefit of stacking that we, that we wanted to, uh, to talk about and um, is multiple attenuation. Now, the next time around, we're going to show some examples of multiples in marine and, and land environments. But um, uh, for now, just kind of think about this conceptually. Uh, this is a, a, another illustration of the power of um, stacking to enhance uh, signal-to-noise ratio in our seismic data. So thanks for uh, joining me, and uh, see you next time.